barrister Lana Kolaris from the Victorian Bar. She's up here in Sydney in the studio. I'm thrilled to have her with us. Lana was recently denounced, wait for it, as a racist <laughs> because she chose not to do the welcome to country at a meeting of the Victorian Bar Council. Lana elected to instead acknowledge, as I was saying earlier, all Australians. She is now doubling down on her criticism of those welcome to and acknowledgement ceremonies. Lana, great. Welcome to Outsiders. Great to have you here. Thanks for coming up to Sydney. Um, now, incredible bravery you showed. I mean, you would think you could speak your mind freely in Australia, but it, particularly you spoke up against what you saw as, 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 as something you didn't want to participate in. Tell us about that day and arriving at that decision and then also tell us what it's been like since. Yes, well, thank you so much for having me here, Rowan and Rita. Um, the reason why I decided to acknowledge all Australians that day is because I'd had enough of this implicit ceding of sovereignty mm. before every meeting, um, uh, before every Zoom meeting, every time we land uh, on a Qantas mm. flight. And um, I'd had enough and I just wanted to make a stand against it and exercise my right to free speech to do so. Well, I'm glad you mentioned sovereignty because that, for me, is the key issue. And you're a lawyer. Yes. Now, I don't know what area of law you specialise in, but you <clears> pinpointed <throat> the very problem for me. Every time we are doing a welcome to country or an acknowledgement of country, implicit in that is the idea that sovereignty as it exists in the law doesn't exist, that it's a fraud and that sovereignty, quote, was never ceded and it always was and always will be some other form of land. Is that what bothers you the most? That's exactly what bothers me. It's the constant repetition of this message that is being given to us that um, sovereignty d does not exist within the Crown in some way. And that's what I've got an issue with. It's wrong mm. in law and it's wrong in fact as well. And that's why I decided to make a stand. Um, and I, I posted the minutes on social media and I got a fairly predictable um, uh, personal attack levelled towards me. And that's what made me think, you know, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to express my views clearly in writing. And um, that's what I did. Rita. Excellent. And how does this uh, philosophy, because it is very prevalent within the legal fraternity, and that worries me mm. <laughs> greatly because you, you, you see it on the bench, you see it elsewhere. How does it impact the law? Because you talked about hearing about a client who was uh, feeling like the justice system wasn't what he expected it to be because of these uh, manipulations or the, the, these undermining of, of what we expect to be the law for everyone unquestionably. Like, whoever you are, you are, you are judged the same regardless of who, who you are and what your background is. Well, that's right. Um, the, the fundamental guiding principle of our constitution today is equality of citizenship. Mm. And if you're going to take a stand that's different to that by making these repeated acknowledgements of country, which repeatedly chip away at that sovereignty, then I think Australians have an instinct and they know that something is not quite right and they understand that there is a, a political push behind this. Mm. And when you're in a situation where um, courts are actually acknowledging country and do not acknowledge the Crown, mm. um, I think people understand that there's some kind of political um, infiltration there. Yeah. Um, and, and that's what makes people... Perhaps it's contributing to the lack, uh, the loss of confidence that people are having in the legal I, system. I think there certainly is this lack of trust in our institutions increasingly, including the justice system in general. Um, these, this view is, is very much amongst the elite, as we call it. But if you speak to the average Australians, I would bet money on this, that the overwhelming majority are sick of this. They don't see a place for it. They see it as divisive, but they're the ones who are least likely to speak up mm. because they fear the backlash. They don't have much power. 